Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 132 of our trek and yesterday and for the next few days we will remain in camp and dig for the nuggets of wisdom contained in the book of Proverbs. Yesterday we did finish up chapter 2 and today we will begin to explore chapter 3 as we mine for additional nuggets of wisdom. If you miss any of our commentary in Proverbs, please go back and pick up those episodes so that you can keep up with us. And once we complete the entire book of Proverbs, we will make the entire commentary available in an ebook. If you have any of your own observations, comments, or questions as we explore these nuggets of wisdom, please share them with us on the comment section of the Daily Journal page at wisdom-trek.com. We are recording our podcast from our studios at home too in Charlotte, North Carolina. And when this episode originally airs, we will be with our friends and business partners, Charles and Allison, as we continue to work through the detailed plans of our current construction project. It is an exciting time, but always one for learning and growth, both on a personal and business level. And at our campfire today, we continue to learn from the wisest man to ever live, Solomon, as he shared personal wisdom with his children. This is a great reminder to us that we have those teachable moments with our kids, grandkids, or any young people that we impart wisdom to on a daily basis. Of course, this will also mean that we have gained the wisdom, insight, and understanding for ourselves. So let's begin our study of the treasures found in Proverbs chapter 3, Let Us Boldly Grow Where Few Have Chosen to Grow Before. The title for chapter 3 is Trusting in the Lord. So let's jump right in on verse number 1. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store up my commands in your heart. We see chapter 3 begins, as usual, with advice for Solomon's children. Solomon encourages his children to remember his commands. His child must remember the words, but he should also aim for a greater or deeper experience. Wisdom should enter into his heart. Wisdom should guide his thoughts. Wisdom should control his emotions and desires. Verse 2 goes on to say, If you do this, you will live many years, and your life will be satisfying. Now Solomon's child will benefit from this wisdom. Solomon mentions here a rich and satisfying life which could be translated to health and wealth. Wisdom brings health because wisdom teaches safe actions. A wise person eats good foods and takes care of his body. Wisdom brings wealth because a wise person is careful. A wise person works hard and he does not waste his money. Do not think that health and wealth shows wisdom though. A thief can become wealthy. An evil person can have bad business practices and take money from other people. Sometimes God gives health and wealth to a person, but not always so. In Deuteronomy chapter 8.18, it was written like this, Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. True health is not only health in the body, though. Your relationship with God must also be healthy. In fact, your relationship with God is more important than your body, although neither of those should be neglected. Solomon was very wealthy, but he knew that true wealth was not money. Wisdom is worth so much more than silver or gold. Wisdom is worth more than all the riches that Solomon had. So let's continue on with verses 3 and 4 in Proverbs chapter 3. Never let loyalty or kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Loyalty and kindness should always be with us. As Solomon writes this, he may be thinking of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9, where it talks about passing on this wisdom to your children each day. And it reads like this, And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk to them when you are at home, and when you are on the road, and when you are going to bed, and when you are getting up. Tie them on your hands and wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Write them on your doorpost of your house and on your gates. In the same way, we should commit these principles that we discovered in the book of Proverbs. We need to repeat them again and again and talk about them in our everyday life. They should become just part of us. These nuggets of wisdom need to become the part of the very fabric of our lives. Now, just as Paula quilts together little pieces of fabrics and makes beautiful designs in her quilts, the principles and proverbs should be quilted together into our lives so that our lives form a beautiful picture. Another thing that was mentioned was love and trust. And these are just not ideas. We must not remember them today and then forget them tomorrow. They must become part of our lives. They should guide every decision. So let's continue on with verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. 
we see in verses 5 and 6 are very important verses. And it's a good idea for you to memorize those. They will help you so that you won't have to worry about the future so much. So let's break those verses down. Trust in the Lord. People trust in many things. Some people trust in money. Some people trust in governments. Other people trust in luck or fate. You might trust your family or even your church. Sometimes all of these will fail you, though. But God doesn't fail us. Psalms 46.1 tells us, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help us in times of trouble. Next part was with all your heart. Perhaps you trust God sometimes, but not at other times. Some people become Christians, but do not trust God with their whole hearts. God is part of their lives, but only part. Maybe they want God at home, but not at work. God wants our whole hearts. We should always desire His wisdom. He wants us to live as Christians at work, at home, at school, at play, everywhere we are. We must trust God even when our lives are very difficult. God encourages us to trust Him in everything. And the next part of the verse was, Do not depend on your own understanding. God is wiser than we are. We may know many things, but God knows everything. We must not be proud, regardless of how much we know. We must not imagine that we are wiser than God Himself. The future is unknown to us, but God knows the future. He is able to lead us, and He will guide us. We should trust in Him and not in our own ideas. So we should pray to God about our lives. We should ask Him to help us and to guide us. And then the next part of the verse says, Seek His will in all that you do. These words remind us that life is like a journey or trek. We shall have many experiences. Some experiences will be good. Others' experiences will be bad. Wherever we are, we should think about God. We should remember that God has a place in our lives. If life is like a trek, we must follow God. He knows the right trail. His way is the right way. Which goes on to the next part of the verse, which says, He will show you which path to take. Or in another translation was, He will clear the path for you to follow. We can trust God to guide us. And today, on our Trek in Proverbs, we learn some important lessons about trusting God to guide and direct us. God will go before us and show us the path to take, and He will clear it for us before we arrive. When we do find obstacles on the trail, He will give us the wisdom to continue on. So think about these points today and join us tomorrow as we continue in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, and we will learn about the wrong types of wisdom and intelligence on another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. And that will finish our podcast for today. Remember to listen to your daily dose of wisdom at wisdom-track.com or subscribe at iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, or YouTube. And by subscribing, these episodes will be downloaded to you automatically. And if you haven't done so already, please rate us on iTunes or one of the other platforms so that we can gain greater exposure for people to follow us. And I would like to ask a favor that you would share Wisdom Trek with your family and friends through email or in person when you're talking with them so that they can come along with us on our trek each day. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I consider you a friend as I serve you through this Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.